Okay, it's probably less than 40 degrees outside and we're already laying out the enclosure. Now this side of the house is the probably most protected from the wind and storms that come through here. But the sun will peak over here soon. And along the roof we're gonna run out this way. We'll have a few uh, glass tops, let sun in for the mornings. The enclosure is roughly 12 by 20. And this is what we'll have for right now. So it's three o'clock in the afternoon. We're checking to see how the sun's gonna hit the enclosure. See from over here, down into this area here. Um, now the original design was coming off using a carport. You know, one ones you buy online, have shipped your house. We're gonna modify from that. And we're laying this out also for a concrete pad. Normally I wouldn't do that, but we have problems with groundhogs and other things digging in, fire ants. So we're taking a little more extra caution. We will line this out on top of the concrete and everything else. Uh, the other reason we have it so close to the house is we're going to have power water coming in through here once we redo the deck. Now we are considering making another enclosure out there. This little area, that little bucket there is one of our targets. And we're considering putting an enclosure out there maybe end of next year, year after. For eastern box turtles or any rescues that will be a carport until then we're going to build this up and i will keep it posted from there okay so here we are updating the turtle pen now as i said before groundhogs have been a problem here and whatnot so we have an electric auger right here that got stuck in chert and so we pried it out with the bar then all of a sudden the auger disappeared as you can see, the auger got sucked down into a big groundhog hole. More reasons, this thing's almost two feet down, why we are putting the concrete slab down for this enclosure. So when an electric auger gets sucked down a hole, you know it's bad. About 15 pounds of broken concrete shoved into the hole so all our cement doesn't go down the holes. Taken from that pile way over there. I really, really hate groundhogs so much. So, oh, this is our progress for today. Not as much as we like. We're gonna have some problems digging with the gophers from previous. But weather holding out, we'll get everything poured and done by Monday. You know, for two people, this is actually turning out pretty good doing two people working it. I just wish I'd get a VA loan for a therapy animal enrichment, but I don't think they're gonna do it. But we'll update more when we have more. So tomorrow or the day after, we should be ready for concrete. This is gonna be about a three and a half inch thick pad, and it's gonna be almost completely two yards of concrete. Again, this whole pen's gonna be 12 by 20 for our box turtles and red dragons. Okay, we just got done pouring the concrete for the turtle pin for the Chinese box and red dragons. It is almost three yards of concrete. So we're going to have float this out today and get smoothed up. Uh, then we'll put the metal walls on and we're going to take some of that PVC board that people like to use for enclosures on the inside of it to go around. And then we'll put a pond liner up in there also before we fill it up. We figure it's going to take about uh, six yards of topsoil to get it up and done. Now, one thing it did is we took some of the extra cement. We're filling up an old bucket. This will become a giant stepping stone. They'll stick up from the top of the substrate. So when you go into the pen, you're not accidentally stepping on any of the animals right away who might bury themselves under any of the other rocks. Okay, more updates to go later. Well, we're coming along good now. Got some of the trusses up and everything else. Got our little picture up for the year. Moving in. Right here in these gaps is where we're going to have the two windows for the morning sun. Now we've got some of the 12 foot sheets of PVC board, and that's what we're going to do the whole inside with. We'll have to cut them down to about. 36 inches right here because we'll have the metal 
on the outside going all the way to the ground. Uh, some of the wood looks kind of nasty because we're recycling stuff. In fact, we ran out of long beams and had to yank some stuff out of the deck, some of the uh, good boards from the deck to get them done. But another couple of weeks, we should have most of this roughed in. Uh, but it'll be spring before I actually get to finish it up with the water feature and plan it out. I'll wait for another update. Okay, got another update. Got most of the roofing done. Uh, I got to do the top cap and some flashing. Getting the uh, first wall on the back. Getting all the framing done. Only thing we wish we would have done a little differently is with the glass here. We wish we would have built it up a little bit higher in the box to do the flashing around it rather than below, but that's not really going to matter too much. Uh, the glass is some recycled glass from a convenience store door. It lets in 79% of all UBV in, so it won't block too much. And it'll still give the area a good uh, forest type setting, you know, filter sunlight. You know, the sun over here in the afternoon for winter time will be over the top in, in the summer. Sun will hit hits good in this area, so this is where we want to put the sand and everything for all the egg laying and any of the substrate for that. Over here is going to be the water feature, and then we'll do a few other things from there. Probably put a camera right here. We'll have a water line come in. Over here, once we start redoing some of the porch, another power line for the timer for the sprinkler system, and we'll go from there. With any luck, we'll get this done by March. It's about 31 degrees out. We're getting everything set up. All the dirt came in last night, framed for the pond, because we honestly don't know what we're doing building that. Door stuff, ordered fencing got some outdoor lighting got the wiring done lighting is freakishly bright and in case there's leaks we have some metal flashing over the top so we'll start finishing up the pond today and filling this with dirt we'll see how things go from there okay we're getting ready to fill dirt in this is our extremely over-engineered pond tub we built out of the extra scrap from doing the walls and everything else. We have a couple different stacks here for drains. This one's kind of more of a backup thing. This is one where we'll have a homemade filter made out of some colanders put right here. It'll come down, pump up, and this will be another kind of bio filter. So we're just like over-engineering everything. Uh, building a step here and we have our drain system going around here a four inch pipe the pond here will be we'll put a liner in and then we'll concrete it this stack will stay up kind of as emergency drain like I said this will be a colander type filter right here so with any luck, we won't have any issues. The pond is about almost six foot long. And by the time we're done, it'll be probably about an inch higher. The depth of the substrate will be around 18 inches. The height of the pond will be right around 19. So we'll have it everything able to drain and clean here. Drains on each side for the piping. The water, we'll have a water system come in here to spray the whole area. That'll be another video probably in another couple months. But other than that, this is what's going to, we'll get everything set up for the skeleton before we start pouring all that dirt in. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we got all the dirt moved. Uh, I was wrong thinking it was going to be six yards. There's 14 yards of dirt in this thing. Uh, we had a rain and everything last night, so I found I got some leaks up around here. I saw the wires. Most everything was okay. It was a light rain. I'll get up there and fix stuff later. Please ignore the construction on my house. But we got some of this stuff in for doing all the spraying and watering. 
picked up a few more we'll put them in down here later and we got the pump so we're getting to start doing all this next week with any luck we'll have everything together except for the planting okay update for today on getting stuff built we have the new pond covered up right now some of the cement is drying and we have a bunch of bad storms coming in this here is what we were originally going to put the pump into and run everything up and out the top here for the pump the water out electricity problem is we didn't know if the pump would empty this faster than it would naturally fill in or pull we didn't want to cause any problems so the fix was a five gallon bucket with a couple attachments to it and that should be it we will we won't have any of this water tested probably for another couple weeks uh, mostly just weather permitting because we're about to get massive storms okay another update later okay we've had massive rainstorms and those are always good to tell you where like your leaks and stuff are so we can look at the mud here and see we had some leaks in the windows rolling down and fix but what the best part is we know where our blow-in is going to be and everything else and really for the amount of rain we got it came out pretty good to give you an example of how much rain we had this pond out here was only about half full now it's from here all the way to here that's in one night so and this you figure would have flooded with that much rain blowing but nope everything's working good i'll get up here and tweak some of the leaks in this area that i got fixed and so we get some nicer weather we'll start finishing this up okay we got some nice weather running some updates the yellow things are concrete tubes we got them down to 12 inches they were 16 but we had to kind of bring them down now what these are going to be are steps it's like kind of like this one this is actually made from a five gallon bucket and it goes all the way down sits on top of a cinder block and now the golf balls are for centering where we're going to put them now, the reason these are in here is because walking around an enclosure, you never know where your animals are buried. And I'd rather have something to step on that's deep enough that the little jerks can't get under and not crush one of them. Uh, this here is one of the hides we we're working on. We've got some stuff. This is a work in progress. It's one of the tubes got cut. This lid's not ready. This lid has a, the, the hide lids will be different with foam and probes and everything else but the weather stays good we'll have the pond up and testing in about end of the week don't know yet but there we go that's good ah so turtle cam turtle cam works good assuming you got good wi-fi to it i have found out that the heavy rains will actually set off the motion I got it turned off right now or it would send my phone constant dingings me working out here but that's actually been a pretty good little thing right there so last view with any luck this will all come out good okay let's take a look at the progress we got now okay, it is february i think it's first second i'm not sure now to get the vinyl coated mesh one by one amazon was the only place where we get the uh, five foot tall by 50 long, 50 foot long rolls okay, we're gonna step in we still have some stuff to refine to do i see the steps here these are all 14 inches deep to keep from crushing any of the animals may dig down now got the pond kind of working we're gonna go over some mistakes we're gonna fix next week uh, got a couple inches of sand here, kind of encourage egg laying on this side. We tested all of sprinklers. They seem to be working. A little bit of adjust adjustments needed. This is about two, three inches of topsoil, bag topsoil, that we did. I think we used 10, 12 bags to cover the regular substrate we had in here. Basic topsoil not super good but you know okay for our area we're going to try and get planting done in april so now let's talk about the mistake we got going on you see the pond didn't look so high well that's because we got the, the pump bucket a little low to the top that was something we kind of overlooked 
So what we'll do is we'll have to get a new bucket. We'll pull this out where the drain pipe comes to the side of the bucket. We'll take that off. The new bucket, we'll put it in the bottom and come up where the top of the bucket is about an inch or so higher than the top of the pond. That way, you know, water balances itself. We can go from there. The strainers are going to be our makeshift filter. We'll put two of them there. We'll put a piece of filter material between them. And I'll probably take some rubber or something to go around the bottom to keep any seepage from going in. Uh, another thing we'll do is probably take another trash can bottom, put it around that so one slides over the other so we don't have the cave-in thing going on. Uh, now this is a hide. We'll have a separate video on this later, so we're not going to go there. Um, we might put one over here where the extra materials are. But so far, so good. Ignore the squeaky chicken. I took that from the neighbor's dog because she keeps stealing everything from us. She's not too happy about it, but eh, she'll deal with it. And this, so the fencing came out good. Learning how to tighten them up by pulling is was an interesting thing. We've never done it before. A little bit of flex, but it's, it's pretty good. I'm not too, not too angry about it. Still a little bit of leaking up in here, but we'll deal with that later. We did have to go to bubble boxes here. The bubble boxes were uh, a necessity and doing a little bit of modifications to get the stuff for the camera. And we had to build out the sides right here a little bit. Sorry about the sun glare. So we could open these boxes up a little easier. The night. Got the lights working. Really, we haven't had too many failures. Uh, once we get the this area fixed, we're going to run water lines up into here to take care of all the spraying and watering. And one other thing we have we're going to do, this will be another video, is the grow out box that will go from about right here over to here. We have three compartments, but it'll be, again, you know, I'm big on modularity. And it'll be a grow out box for some of the smaller animals that can't necessarily live with the big boys and girls right away. Overall, we're doing pretty good. We should be done, weather permitting, in another couple weeks. Okay, let's take a final look. See what we got going on, the fixes. So, we fixed that. Sorry, we buried it up before I could show you. We had to raise the bucket that was in there up uh, to make it even where we can make the pond actually deeper now. That blue thing won't come off, so I'm not worried about it damaging. This will be the filter. I put filter media in in between the two colanders and put them over that. But overall, we got flow, we got dirt, we got sprinklers, uh, a few more things to do that we're not going to video with the gutters and some trim stuff inside with it. And this is the grow out boxes. This is where we're going to put the American Hybrid and the two McCords box turtles when they come here. Little pan off Amazon. I kind of like the design. There's two. There's this one and a brown square one. Probably put that in the other ones. But other than that, everything's all finished and all set. Uh, still no decision on that, but we'll start planting. This is February, so we'll start planting here uh, shortly. The other good thing about this box is it's all under here, so we have plenty of room for the animals if we want to put some plants up there. And there's plenty of room if we need to put another box in here for more grow outs. But, I want to look around.